Hello everyone, it's here, Peacekeeper, coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the French Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 6 La Galassonniere class of light cruisers. The La Galassonniere class of light cruisers was a class of six cruisers built for the French Navy in the 1930s. The six ships are La Galassonniere, Montcalm, Georges Legs, Jean de Vienne, Marseillaise and Gloire. This class was different from other London Naval Treaty type cruisers because a ship of her tonnage was either armed with a lot smaller caliber guns, like the US Atlanta class, or ships with their gun caliber were usually heavier in displacement. So uh, a ship like La Galassonniere in US terms, for her tonnage, she should be equipped with like five inch guns like the Atlanta class. But because she has 6-inch guns, and in triple turrets, she should weigh closer to 10,000 tons like the Cleveland class. But she doesn't. She weighs between the two roughly at 7,500 uh, 7, tons of displacement. While expanding upon the previous Emile Bertin and her design, additional armor was added, as well as additional anti-aircraft batteries. The primary, primary revolution, though for the La Galassonniere class was the combination of armor and firepower in such a small tonnage while also being able to maintain a high speed. In terms of their service history, the 4th Cruiser Division, comprised of Georges Legs, Montcalm, and Gloire, was stationed out of Brest and took part in screening Atlantic convoys at the early part of World War II. They were also used to ship French gold to Canada from France and Africa. When tensions rose with Italy and the Mediterranean Sea, France sent out the 3rd and 4th cruiser divisions, consisting of all of the La Galassonniere class ships, and they were stationed in Algiers to handle tensions there, while uh, they were also sent out to intercept Italian fleets, or at least to attempt to. They never actually succeeded in that. While the British forces were negotiating with the French naval forces at Mers el Kabir, the 3rd and 4th cruiser division were rerouted to Toulon to meet up with Dunkirk and Strasbourg. There, they served under Vichy French forces until the Allies landed in Morocco and Algeria in 1942. Uh, during this, the Germans attempted to seize the French ships in Toulon, but French forces in control of them scuttled them, which included La Galassonniere, Jean de Vienne, and Marseillaise. The remaining three ships defected to the Allies, where they were underwent refit and rearm. For the remainder of the war, they supported Allied landings in Normandy, as well as the invasion of southern France in Operation Dragoon. After the war, they went to Indochina and then back to the Algerian coast until they were sold for scrap in the 1950s and 1960s. In-game, La Galassonniere plays a lot like an up-armored Emile Bertin. The HE is fantastic, the armor piercing is good, concealment is good at 11.6 kilometers, but she does trade that armor for some speed. She's not as fast as Emile Bertin, and as a result, she's not as flexible, but her top speed is still pretty good at 31 knots. Maneuverability is also very good, plus the ship does gain access to speed boost, finally, which means we can do a little bit more of the W and S key and a lot less of the A and D key in order to throw off shots, which we struggled a little bit with Emile Bertin because of uh, her outright speed and her maneuverability and the lack of that en um, the engine boost consumable. In my opinion, the biggest weakness of La Galassonniere has to be that she is very soft to both high explosive and armor piercing fire and well she does have a fairly large citadel as well here we can see the armor profile but there's these strikes here of citadel armor belt that uh, just that, that pokes out and that's one area that can be hit but you take away everything else and you can see here the tor the uh, the citadel sits above water and is quite large for the ship so taking AP fire in this ship uh, pretty much guarantees some normal penetrations. The entire thing is covered in 16 millimeters of armor, which I'll be honest, I don't think really stops much in the way of incoming shells. Uh, it will stop 8-inch AP shells while angled. However, uh, you do have to worry about anything larger than 8 inches coming through. 
But the ship's speed is really, um, and its maneuverability and relative stealth is by far its strongest suits. So outside of being just flat out not durable, the ship otherwise is pretty dang solid. Also, this ship does have really good anti-aircraft, and of course part of that is because it does have access to the defensive fire consumable, which just adds to the anti-aircraft role that this cruiser is capable of. Okay, let's talk about some stats. Hit points, 27,300 hit points, up to 105 millimeters or 4 inches of armor. Again, that's going to be on that main armored belt. You can see there it's 105 millimeters. The uh, torpedo damage reduction is only 10%, however. So, like most cruisers, not good, but it does exist. So, I guess some is better than none. <clears throat> the main battery consists of three triple 152 millimeter or 6 inch guns. They are mounted in an AB... X or ABY or two up front and a super firing pair and then one in the back. Now the firing arcs are okay, but I found that the placement of this little... I'm guessing that's a deck access. Yeah, that, that's access to get under the uh, weather deck there. And uh, it's really rather inconveniently placed, I'm not going to lie. But you've got the, I'm assuming the aircraft handling facilities back here, even though this ship does not have aircraft in game and um or if it's not aircraft handling i don't know what it is but uh no matter how you slice it uh, this right here limits this rear firing arc a little bit and it makes uh, the ship a little bit uncomfortable to play uh, out in the open it's not quite as uh, useful as emile bertin's uh, third turret is so that main battery range is 15.9 kilometers which for tier six is pretty good so i don't think it's the best in the tier but it's pretty good uh, 9 second re reload time, 14.2 second 180 degree turn time, and a really rather tight 133 meter dispersion. At 12% fire chances, worth noting as well, as well as the HE shell damage at 2200. Of course, the AP shouldn't be ignored either, 3300 damage there, and both have the same shell velocity. Now there is a secondary battery on board, it's going to be 4 dual 90 millimeter guns. These also serve as part of your anti-aircraft suite, but... Uh, Quite honestly, as secondaries, they're pretty lame. They only fire out to uh, 4.7 kilometers. It'll go out a little bit further if you throw advanced firing training on there. But ultimately, really not that strong of a secondary suite. Certainly not worth specking into. Ship does have torpedoes. Two dual uh, torpedo launchers. You got a, one mounted on one launcher mounted on each side. So two per side. Nine kilometer range like Emile Bertin's torpedoes. 60 knot speed. They do 14,833 damage, and they reload in 60 seconds. They do have pretty good firing arcs, though, so if you uh, do find yourself up close and personal with enemy ships, uh, don't hesitate to use them. And you can alternate between sides fairly easily as well. In terms of anti-aircraft defense, the ship does have a reasonably respectable anti-aircraft suite. However, it is concentrated primarily in the mid-range. We can see here that our 90mm guns... Uh, only 15 DPS at 4 kilometers. This is going to be without any of the anti-aircraft firing skills. No advanced firing training on the captain um, or the range module for anti-aircraft. So expect a little bit more out of it by going that route. <clears throat> uh, the 40 millimeter bow fours, though, 95 DPS at 3.5 kilometers. Again, that's going to go out just a little bit further with AFT in the range module. It's a far cry from Cleveland's AA, but it's certainly nothing to sneeze at either. And of course, the 20 millimeter guns, you can see those there, those being 20 millimeter Orlikans, owing to the fact that uh, these ships, when the three that defected to the Allies were sent to the United States for refit, that's why they have all these 40 millimeter Bofors and 20 millimeter Orlikans on board. Max speed, 31 knots, 650 meter turning circle radius, 7.7 .7 second rudder shift time. That's going to be without the rudder shift module. This is one of the few ships that I think you can get away without using the rudder shift module on uh, and use the engine module, and we'll talk about that when we get to the upgrades. Detection range with Concealment Expert is going to be 11.6 kilometers. Without it, it's 12.9, and it's going to be roughly 6.5-ish for uh, detection range by air with Concealment Expert on the captain. And let's talk about some upgrades. <clears throat> main armaments mod one is what i'm recommending for the first slot and the reason for this is because uh 
this ship's main battery, there's not a whole lot of armor surrounding any of the main battery. And as a result, I've noticed that it tends to get knocked out pretty easily. So combining this with uh, preventative maintenance, if you run preventative maintenance on the captain, is a good idea. It just helps with the uh, chance of your main battery getting incapacitated. It drops that by 20%. It increases their hit points by 50% and decreases the time it takes to repair them by 20%. All that stacks up to, you know, just help these things last a little bit longer. Plus, it does the same thing to your torpedo tubes, which... Torpedoes really aren't a, a thing that you rely on on this ship. You don't have enough of them to really spam an area. So any torps you do use are going to be using in a what I would call a skill or finesse scenario where you're up close and personal charging at a ship. Uh, but just, just remember, you know, the ship's probably not the strongest in the up close and personal role uh, unless you're facing off against something like a battleship that has very high penetration guns. You know, like the New York would be one that you could probably get away with charging. My recommendation is if you're going to do that to avoid uh, avoid being in that position for too long. Uh, honorable mention to any of these mods really though, uh, if you were going to run this ship as a predominantly as an anti-aircraft screen, um, that's certainly viable. Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 would be my choice there to help increase the anti-aircraft mount hit point pool. That's going to basically double it. You could also take Magazine Mod 1 to give you basically a free debt flag. It reduces your chance of a magazine detonation by 70%. In the second slot, I'm running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. Uh, you could choose that or Steering Gears Mod 1, depending on which ones you which you would much rather lose less often. Um, losing my rudder, I don't find that to be nearly as big of a disadvantage as losing propulsion, especially since the ship relies so heavily on speed and you know using the WNS keys in order to speed up and slow down while turning to help throw off incoming fire uh, so for me losing my engine is a bigger deal than losing steering gear so that's why I run propulsion systems mod one of course if you don't want to run any of these and you have it engine boost mod one is going to increase the action time or the time at which the engine boost consumable is active for I don't have that number off the top of my head but uh, it's not an insignificant number in the third slot, you can see I'm running Aiming Systems Mod 1. This is going to reduce the dispersion of your main battery by 7%. It's going to increase the torpedo tube traverse speed by 20%, which, okay, your torpedo tubes turn faster. Yay! Uh, it's also going to increase your secondary battery firing range by 5% and decrease the dispersion of your secondary battery by 5%. Again, secondary is not really the strong suit on this ship, so specking into secondaries is not recommended. If you were going to turn the ship into an anti-aircraft escort, AA Guns Mod 2 would be the mount of choice for this slot. That's going to boost your anti-aircraft range by 20%. The other two mods here I really don't recommend as they don't really apply on the ship very well. In the fourth and final slot, you can see I'm running Propulsion Systems Mod 2. This is going to increase engine power when the ship starts moving. That's going to be in that negative 6 to 6 knot range. It's also going to decrease the time it takes to reach full power when accelerating by 50%. So the nice part about this is if you combine this with the engine boost and you slam on the brakes for some odd reason, the ship will just drop in speed like it's, you know, like you drop the anchor. It's really quite funny to mess with a battleship shooting at you at long range because they'll shoot, you'll see it, you'll slam on the brakes, turn in, and all the shots will just fall way far ahead of you. And then you just quickly jam the throttle again and off you go overall this ship is really fun so let's stop talking about it in port let's go look at it in a battle video all right so uh, one thing to just kind of cap this off right uh, off the bat I, somebody's going to ask so i'm just going to head it off at the curb uh, how do i compare this ship to emile bertin well i much prefer emile simply because i feel that the extra speed is worth it but we'll explain a little bit more in this. So in this battle, we do have two carriers. It is a tier five through tier seven fight. And this is kind of an unusual battle for a tier six. At tier six, you tend to see a lot of tier seven, tier eight fights. Um, I guess we're in a tier seven fight, so maybe it's not that unusual. Map is two brothers. And it is, uh, it's a pretty fantastic map. I'm not gonna lie for this ship. But like most US light cruisers, um, finding islands is a good idea. 
And that's not a, a trait that uh, is unique to any, to just this cruiser. You know, it's, it's, excuse me, it's something that uh, all light cruisers really suffer from. So right off the bat here, we're going to show you what the gun angles look like. Um, again, that, that uh, access to get below decks is really hindering in the, the actual gun angle here. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It, you're just not going to be able to to stay really heavily angled, and it's sad because had that uh, you know not been there, you got plenty of room at which you could quite easily uh, take advantage of the uh, you know the gun angles. It would almost be kind of like a reverse Nuremberg, in that you could quite easily take that rear turret and traverse it 360 degrees and and to be able to unmask it at certain angles. But with that there, uh, it, you really have to expose a healthy amount of broadside in order to use it. And unfortunately, when you do that, it makes it very easy to hit that citadel. Yeah, you've got armor, which is fantastic. However, the armor itself is not going to save you from, uh, you know, incoming battleship fire, or if you're broadside, it's not going to save you from armor piercing. So the... Uh, the onset of this, uh, we're going to head off to the west. The west is awfully open. However, there are these islands here. If you can leapfrog between them at the start of a match, that will really help kind of set things off. It also really helps if you have a destroyer that is scouting and ours... Well, initially I didn't think he was actually going to show up. So there's only two destroyers on the enemy team, so that limits a little bit of what we can focus on as far as their team is concerned. However, on our side, we definitely, uh, like, I didn't think our Nicholas was going to actually come over this way. Uh, at first, he looked like he was going to head off to the other side with the other destroyer, but he did come our way. So we're going to find this island here. This is one of my favorite islands to find on this map. And if there is ever a carrier in a match, this can be kind of risky. It just kind of depends on the situation. But uh, ultimately, we're going we're gonna to sit here and wait for this Nicholas to get out there and scout like he's supposed to. And we only want to angle just enough so that we can uh, shoot over this island and not expose huge amounts of our broadside. First target up is a Congo. Congo days! <laughs> so, uh, like most things, spamming HE at long range is not an issue for this ship at all. Um, we do have a fairly high amount of range to use, but sometimes you, you, you end up in situations like this where you've just got to, to bail on the whole situation. Now, one, <laughs> one hit and we get two fires. Oh, man. The guns on this thing are, are absolutely insane at times. But the nice part about the engine boost and the engine consumable is we can sit here and we can uh, move back and forth. Like I said, we can abuse that uh, W and S key quite a lot to uh, take advantage of it. And the closer we get to this island, the less likely we are to, uh, you know, take incoming fire from that Congo, which is now promptly moving. And you can see we've switched to armor piercing. Um, not because it, well, I mean, it's it's decently effective, but ooh, our carrier smacked that Congo. But if he exposes a broadside, he's going to start eating citadels here. And if he doesn't, well, it's too late now. <laughs> Our guys now had, did not want to have any of that. So at this point, we're using our engine boost to get back up to, to the max speed. And because there aren't too many, uh, you know, enemy ships over here, we're just going to go ahead and charge right on in. So we eat a, a, a normal pen and an over pen, but we managed to start the Kong on fire and then poof, he disappears. But what's this? A shores. Coming out broadside, so uh, like most cruisers, Shores has a very large citadel. He is also very uninterested in exposing anything but that massive citadel. He can shoot HE at me all he wants, but we're going to start lopping off 6k at a time here. So there's the first citadel hit. How about this one? Ooh! Five of them and an overpen for a dev strike. You heard that right, a dev strike. So at this point, I thought I was going to be able to duck myself over here, but instead, uh, yep, nope. <laughs> so managed to, to duck out of the uh, hood's firing arc here, but he seems to sail broadside. We've managed to pop our defensive fire consumable in the hopes of being able to take out their ship. But we're going to go ahead and take this opportunity to uh, turn. 
and hope that uh, we we survive this encounter. It's very easy to lose this encounter, I'm not going to lie. At these ranges, we should be uh, definitely not excited about being broadside to a battleship, so the faster we can turn around, the better. Thankfully, the reload time of the hood is such that I become an uninteresting target to him by the time his reload is up. So now that he's ignoring us again, we'll just go back to shooting at him, and you can see we've managed to start him on fire yet again. So he's not terribly happy. We are up to 42,000 damage at this point. We have removed a cruiser from this fight, and there is a second fire right there. We do have a cyclone incoming, which is also nice and beneficial, but uh, it's still a minute 22 out. At this point, our entire goal is basically to burn this hood down because we don't have anything else to really engage target-wise. And, uh, well, well, we'll start pushing over towards their cap here in a second. You can see our whole team is basically uh, lemming training this way. We've taken out three. They've not sank any of us yet, so that's always a good sign. We do have a destroyer off to our left. Looks like it's a kamikaze. Uh, not overly concerned about destroyer torpedoes as the ship is agile enough to make it through there without too many issues. Hood burns his repair, so let's go ahead and see if we can't continue to start him on fire. At longer ranges, it seems like we get a lot more deck penetrations, and that really doesn't help. Uh, oop, there's some kamikaze torpedoes. It doesn't seem to really help do a whole lot of damage, so uh, really relying on fires there at that point. You can see uh, getting about a thousand damage overall. Oop, looks like the Emile Bertan exposed herself a little bit much there, but six fires though. Let's see if we can't get some more on him. Ooh, look, a ranger. Be nice if we could hit him, but he's out of my range. Okay, so the hood has burned his repair party, and we know that because he had a fire on him last time we looked. And we're going to use this smoke to try and duck out of uh, incoming fire. And hopefully we can get this hood started on fire again before he disappears. Up to 62,500 damage. Looking to add the hood to the kill list. Apparently we need to learn to aim, though, because... Uh, that would, uh, that would be critical. We are finally in the smoke, though, so we can expose just a little bit more of our broadside as we're chasing him down. Also, we, if we can catch up, we can catch this ranger and maybe even this independence here. Okay, so we're out of the smoke again. Oop, there's a fire. That'll burn for a while. Be nice to, to get uh, get the kill because we could probably get... To, is it liquidator or arsonist? I can never keep him straight. So we went ahead and we did a little bit of a throttle jockey there, slammed on the brakes, hoping that maybe, just maybe, we would be able to uh, hide behind the island, but unfortunately not. <clears throat> Hood's still burning, 4,000 hit points left, looking to add another fire, at least some more damage to try and get the kill here, maybe once he goes behind this island. So he's no longer a threat. Thankfully he's still spotted, we're waiting for the effects of the cyclone to take hold though. 75,000 damage here. Um, I, th I think... I mean, the ship is solid, don't get me wrong, but I'm still way more comfortable with Emile Bertin than I am with La Galassonniere. There's another fire, so that fire should stick for a little bit. He's got 3,000 hit points left, or the only target that he can probably shoot at at this point. Oop, oop, oop! Got the kill. All right. So we are in their base, and we are ahead of them so far in, in ships. I'm just going to go ahead and charge around the island and see if I can't take out this ranger in the process. As you can see, the playstyle of this is very, very similar to uh, Emile Bertin. It's just that uh, the ship is a little bit softer than Emile is, and it's a little bit harder for uh, La Galassonniere to take advantage of, uh, you know take advantage of the various, uh, like, islands and stuff. You've got speed boost, so you can really take advantage of the islands. It's just that it, it's, not as, it's not as fast. And so whenever you're not as fast as other, um, other ships, especially like Emile Bertin, that is exceptionally quick, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to, you know, accomplish similar play styles. But with the speed boost... You can, you can uh, rather than just outright outrunning shells being fired at you, you can employ much better tactics that involve a lot less of that. 
and a lot more uh, ooh, rare HE Citadel and involve a lot more uh, of the skilled play. Went ahead and launched the, those set of torpedoes ahead, but you can see the torpedo arcs are fantastic. Look at those arcs. We're going to go ahead and we're going to throw another set through. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the torpedoes are on the way, but ooh, there's another two citadels with HE. I didn't know Ranger had this soft armor, but uh, apparently it does. Sneaking on through here, another citadel hit. A lot of bounces though, so it'd be nice to get around this. Maybe get a little bit, a little bit more aggressive of an angle where I can, or we can just do that in the match with two citadels. So very versatile HE, very versatile AP. Both exceptionally good. 101,956 damage. You can see here we got 1,549 base XP. Uh, well, not even uh, not even a half a million in potential damage and 207,000 in credits. Overall, I really do like La Galassonniere, but uh, I prefer Emile Bertin, even though Emile sees a lot of Tier 7 fights. I just feel a little bit more at home with it. Overall, still a great ship, though. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you for watching.